So I'm excited to be here again today. Hope you guys like that intro. That's going to be there from now on. Might be updated. The quality could be better. Um, I'll just actually shut this door. Give me a sec. That'll close. Okay, so I'm, I apologize for the fairly bad lighting. Don't have my ring light with me today, but. Today's going to be fun. We've got a few things to talk about. And the first thing to talk about is you can probably tell we, okay, sorry, um, we got a new camera. Well, we didn't get a new camera, but we're using the camera I used for my YouTube videos for the live stream as a webcam now. So that's pretty cool. You can see, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot better than the FaceTime uh, camera on my Mac. So. Yeah, we, we, we got that, and then I know last time I was streaming, I literally just used the computer audio and the computer camera. But we've also got now a um, little microphone for our live stream. It's like a Zoom audio device, and I don't want to bring it too close to me because it's, it, it picks up from a very far distance. So, yeah, we'll keep it far away. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that. This was easy to set up, so I'm going to be doing this from now on. And I'm just using the light in the room, so yeah, nothing special when it comes to light in here. Um, okay, let's see who we got today. I've said good day to a few people, and we've actually got a pretty good amount of people in the chat. Okay, let's uh, see. Fishkid61. Yeah, apparently this uh, streaming time was a bit too late for him, so he couldn't make it. That's a shame. Um, I've I've been flat out all afternoon, so I just managed to get right in time and prepared for this live stream. So, yeah. Uh, Valley Lake Fish Room, how's it going? Welcome to another live stream. Ollie Stitsky. How are you going? Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I, I, I really like that music. This, I mean, it's just from the YouTube studio library. It's nothing special, but for an intro, it's better than what we used to have, which was nothing. Craig is in the house. Welcome, Craig. How are you? Dan, also, how are you? Five minutes to go. Yeah, I thought I'd put that intro at the start just so that it gives time for people to come in or else I'm going to, like, int introduce what we're doing today, that sort of stuff, and they just come and they don't know what's happening. 
So yeah, it's better for everyone if we do that little intro. Plus, I like it because it's groovy. <laughs> How was my day? Yeah, my day was good. We'll get into that in a sec. Um, did some pretty interesting, well, not interesting, but cool in my opinion today. But yeah, you guys might not find it like any new news, or that sort of stuff. Anyway, um, how's it going, Fishers Aquatics World? Welcome, James. Hope you're doing well too. And Lucky Eye, how's it going? Uh, no worries, Lucky. I was a bit confused at first. I, I was subscribed to your, I think I was subscribed to your Lucky Eye channel and then I watched your recent video and you said you moved channels. So then I checked out your new channel. It's really good. Formative and very entertaining. So good job. And how are you going, Lucky? Welcome. Ollie said, scream for $5. I'm not doing that again. Last stream, I screamed for $10. Good old Will Wiseman did not give me what he promised. Um, I mean, screaming into this mic would sound really bad and it probably wreck your ears for life. So I wouldn't do that to you guys. So probably not today. Probably never. Yeah, James, I did not get that 10 bucks from Will. Very frustrating. No, that's fine. I mean, it was entertaining, I guess. Oh, yeah. Lucky I always good to support fellow fish people or fish keepers or fish tubers. It all depends on what they like to be called, but, yeah. Um, very cool. Fish for life. How are you? Enjoy. I've been in, really enjoying your videos lately. And yes, you made it. In fact, you've been making it to the last few live streams. You're very loyal. Thanks so much. Um, in fact, a lot of you guys have you. Really great to see. Um, and also, yeah, Fish for Life has been making some really great content lately. Um, great job. Ollie said moonwalk for five. I, I'm not actually a good moonwalker, but I mean, I can try. I can do what I can if you want. If you want me to, let me know in the chat if you want me to moonwalk. Otherwise, I'd look like an idiot. Um, no worries, um, Jared, Fish for Life. No worries at all. Okay. So the chat's looking pretty dead at the moment. So a few things I want to talk about before we get into today's topic is um, um, I did some, a couple things today. So I'm not actually um, at my aquariums at the moment. Um, so I haven't been able to film with my fish. So I've just been using old footage and doing voiceovers. So that's why it's changed a little But when I'm back with my fish tanks again, which will, I don't know how long that'll be till lockdown's over. Um, then I will, uh, I guess do what I was doing only a week ago or two. So yeah, I, I quite prefer those, those sort of videos where I'm talking to the camera instead of voiceovers. It's just, you, you don't need to worry about as much footage of the fish and yeah. Um, yeah. And then what else uh, did I do? What did I do today? I had school online learning still in lockdown here. Um, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I forgot, but, I finally got vaccinated today. Um, my first Pfizer, my first shot of Pfizer. Don't know, you know, I don't need this on anymore. I just put this on to prove, but COVID-19, oh, okay. COVID-19 vaccinated. 
like half vaccinated, but still. Yeah. I'm feeling good. It was only two out two or three hours ago, so yeah. Don't worry about me. Um Oh, Craig, you're lucky. Right out of oh I guess well, no, where I where I am when on lockdown, but where I live where my school is, is in lockdown. So I, I'm just doing like remote learning from like a free area, you could say, but yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to um, get started on that. So, uh, Jared, it did not hurt. Um, it hurt for like one millisecond. Like literally it was just, a, oh, okay, done. So, yeah, it's nothing to worry about, although it is really the after, like the um, symptoms you'll get after the effects. I think, you, like, most people will get probably shiver the shivers or a really sore arm, like you can't lift your arm as much. Yeah, I got on my left arm, so I my, my right arm's how I want it to be. Anyway, um... So yeah, um, that's some things to talk about. Now, what else is there to report? It looks like um, Ollie's the only one who's asking me to do the moonwalk, so tough luck, Ollie. Okay, so I guess. I'm thinking of doing maybe um, a live stream a week, but consistently at the same time each week. I'm trying to be very consistent on YouTube now, taking it seriously, but um, yeah. So there's two options we have for live streaming on in, on a weekday, and we can and I've managed to make sure I can do this. Uh, when I go back to school too. We have either this time on every Tuesday night, and which is literally just this time every week, or we have the same time or maybe a bit later, or yeah, a bit later, or the same time on Wednesdays. So, um, yeah, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I am pretty free. So if you guys, which one do you prefer, Tuesdays or Wednesdays live streams? And yeah, I'll see, I'll see what gets the most votes. I think I can start a poll, well, like not directly on on StreamYard, but yeah. But yeah, new time, much different time than I usually do. It's usually, I usually live stream like five or six hours earlier. But I mean, I see lots of other, Aussie creators who are, you know, doing similar time and it works out well for me as I'm a, in lockdown, really, I have lots of free time. Not, not, not like a lot, though, but still. Daniel Keeping Fish, how's it going? Um, been a long time since I've seen you on the channel. How are you going? Um at work but just jumped in for a few minutes to wish you a fun stream. Yeah, it will be fun. A shame, a shame you can't, can't can't join, but yeah, thanks for your support and um, might see you in a future stream or later on if I'm going long enough. Okay. If you want me to do it so badly, but that means Five dollars, Ollie. I've been ripped off once. I'm not going to be ripped off again. Okay. Or no, no, no. Let's do it. Okay. So this is just going to be like one second of nothing interesting. Okay. By the way, uh, sorry for the mess. Okay. Um, it's really just what everyone can do. <laughs> so nothing special. Okay. 
back on my comfy chair. There we go. Oh, yeah. Much better. Um, okay, let's... Yeah, Craig, I should ask him for 10. Let's make that 10, Ollie. A deal's a deal, okay? You said five, but you meant 10. Also, I'm sorry, um, like, the camera's there, and I'm just looking at my computer at the chat. Um, so I'm sorry that I'm not really um, talking to the camera. It's literally very far, not very far, but it's... It looks like a very far distance. It's just that that's the shortest I can get. So, yeah, we'll just have to make do with this for now. Oh, no, 10. <sighs> Ripped off again. Lies and deception. Okay, it seemed everyone liked that. To be honest, I thought that was actually pretty fun. It made me happy. It made me happy. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah. Let's, uh, stop with the jib jabber jabber and let's, I guess, get into the topic for today. We're going to be having a topic all the time now. Um, or like most of the time until we get like you know like 20 people watching at a time on at usual then we'll probably have like plenty of questions to just answer but you know if it's just like this we've got to get a conversation starting now i'm not sure if any of you are familiar with the electric blue acara or the blue acara it is a south american i should know this um Feel it. I'm pretty sure it's South American Electric Blue Cara Oregon. Origin. Sorry. South Central and South America. Yeah, I thought so. Thought I read that somewhere. South America, a South American cichlid, like a lot of where a lot of people's favorite fish are native to. Um and I'm not really talking about the blue acaras. I mean, they still look pretty cool, but I'm talking about the electric blue or the neon blue acaras. So we've already got um, some people, and they have some. Craig got some a month ago. Very nice. Yeah, I do quite enjoy them too. Um, of course, mine aren't long term um i'm gonna have to probably i'm gonna have to probably get another a bigger home which will probably be my cousin's 250 liter aquarium that'll, that'll probably happen at the end of the year because they do get pretty big but we're gonna get into like the informative stuff in a second and we'll just see what people's responses are to this fish and then when i'm talking and doing the presentation i probably I'm not sure, but I might not be able to answer the, any questions in the live chat. I'll get to that after I've done, like, the presentation. Whatever you want to call it. It's not really a prepared one, at least. Um, Daniel's got um, some electric blue caras, and they're breeding again. Very nice. I heard somewhere that you, you were breeding um, the electric blue caras, and I, I think I've seen them featured on your channel. But, yeah, I can't. I'm bad at remembering. I'm sorry. Uh, Aussie Sands, how's it going? Welcome to the live stream. Uh, I've seen you been a recent um, commenter or supporter of the channel, so um, I can already tell you're also another native Aussie. I mean, not native Aussie, but never mind. Sorry, that was bad <laughs> oh, no. um you're another fellow aussie
Yeah, Craig, I haven't seen much. Uh, well, actually, now that I think about it, mine's actually been growing quite fast. It's just that since uh, you're monitoring so closely, it doesn't look like much, but really is. Always thought about getting big, need to start off with something more profitable to prove my parents it is worth it. Yeah. I mean, if you start reading the electric blue carriers, you're going to get lots of fish stores wanting to get their hands on your EBAs. So, yeah, if you can manage to breed them, get some advice from Daniel, well, you will, your parents will be very impressed. I can, I can tell you that. Although I'm not going to be breeding any EBAs soon. Maybe if I have it, enough room. Yeah, Daniel, so true. It's already bad. In the future, it's going to, my memory's going to be like a white area. Okay. Let's, um, I guess, get into the, um, I guess, topic. Okay, I'll stop stuttering and I'll get right into it. Um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share a video file to start off with. We're just going to talk a bit about the electric blue cara. Oh no. Oops, I'm gonna need to Oh never mind, I won't I won't do the clip. We'll just do uh the photo. Ah see it. See it, Daniel, thanks for coming. Really appreciated. Um, okay. Okay, we'll just scrap what I was, what I was going to do. Okay, let's just do the sheet. You guys really don't know what I'm talking about, though. Oh, well. Okie dokie. Here we have um, a little three reasons why you should consider the electric blue carers. Now, luckily, I can see the chat too now, so I'm going to be able to um, join. I'll be able to like see you guys. So. Oh, see you, Lucky Eye. Um, thanks for coming. Might see you later because this will be going till probably another half an hour, but yeah. Enjoy the replay, I guess. Um, that's great to hear, Fish for Life. Yeah. It, it'd be appreciated, but it's not, it's not mandatory at all. Like, I'll still look at you as you already are. If, um, you don't um, become a member, so you don't need to worry too much, but yeah, just a few extra things if you are interested. Okay, so looking at these three photos, um, these are all electric blue cameras, of course, and here are my three reasons stated, and we're going to dive into those three reasons with a bit of in-depthness. Well, that, was, that came out wrong. But yeah, okay, so the first reason you should get one. Now, oh, before I start, anyone wondering, yes, I do keep an electric blue acara. Yes, it's healthy, and I haven't had any issues with it. It's pretty healthy, in my opinion, and it's um, there's been an ick outbreak in that tank, and it did not get ick at all. So it is doing really well and eating and um, very active and semi-aggressive but um, not a problem towards the other fish because I'll tell you why in 
when we get to it, I guess. Okay. Okay. Oh, good day, Marlon. How's it going? Oh, Marlon the Catfish and Neil and Tetras. Hope you're well. Welcome to the stream. We're just about to get into the three reasons why you should buy an electric blue camera. Yes. Okay. Let's uh let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so firstly, appearance. Like, why would no one why would anyone not like the appearance of the electric blue cara? They're a bulky, um, I guess a bit of a larger looking fish, but it's not that large. It looks like something that'd grow huge, but it's not. So yeah, firstly is the appearance. They got this neon blue coloration across the body and on the fins. I think it's um I think it might be the males. They have that yellow stripe that goes along the top of the dorsal fin, and that can also stand out pretty nicely. And also, the cool thing about it is that some electric blue carriers actually have a bit of a different sort of neon blue than on the fins and on the body. So you can see with the top one in the appearance uh, photo, it has this light blue, sort of almost white um, neon coloration. And then it's got more of a richer blue, less neon fins. And that's really cool in my opinion. You've also got um, – oh, wait, wait a sec. Sorry. What am I doing here? Okay. And then they've also got some – the kind of red eyes, if you look close enough, they do look pretty red. That's pretty cool if you do study them up close. So yeah, I that's what I love about. No, that's my number one reason why you should get it because the appearance they're great for your planted aquarium, and they'll make a really great centerpiece. In fact, they're in my centerpiece, my top seven, top eight centerpiece fish. I video did well, but um, yeah, they're in my list there because they are a great centerpiece and they'll stand out. I'm sure when you have a visitor coming to look into the tank, you're gonna get someone commenting on that electric blue cara every time a visitor, if they know fish or they don't, they look at the tank, they see the electric blue cara, and that's the first thing they point to. That fish, oh my gosh, that fish looks cool. In fact, one of my live streams when I had my fish tanks behind me, people were actually looking at the electric blue cara from a distance. They could see it that far away from like three or four meters and also on a small screen. So that tells you they really stand out and they just make really cool fish. They, they'll get people right in the hobby once they can get it right when keeping these fish. Okay. The reason number two is care. Now, they've got pretty simple care, just like most fish, really. Um, they're pretty hardy, and, in fact, like I said before, I had an ick outbreak and didn't get any ick. It's pretty bulletproof, although if you do have very harmful chemicals like ammonia or um, – uh, chloramines in the water that that could possibly that could really easily kill them so but when it comes to basic care let's just talk about like the basic requirements you can google this but this is with my experience um you really want to for the best experience and the healthiest ebas which means electric blue caras um all you really want is stable parameters you want to keep it really stable and at one area so for example Temperature wise, I recommend you keep the temperature at 26 degrees Celsius, which is around 76, 76 degrees Fahrenheit. I am still bad at that area after two years of researching on that, so I'm sorry. But you can always just, I guess, um, do a, what is it called, a translation thing on Google. Um, but yeah, so you want to keep the temperature. At try aim for between two different temperatures from like 26 to 27 or 25 to 26. Keep it in that range and you'll have a really happy electric blue cara. Although you'll still have a happy one if you have only like two degrees differences every now and then. Okay, so that's um as far as the temperature goes. For pH, they do prefer soft water. Um, 
Well, I keep mine. Um, I'm just going to try something. I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, no, I was wrong. I mean, yeah, sorry. What, what am I talking about? They do love soft acidic water. Not too soft, though. If you put it too soft, then they don't like that. So you want to, you don't really want to go under 6.5, but you don't really want to go over 7.5. I try aim for neutral, which is 7.0. That's in between and keep it around there from 6.9 to 7.1. Then, yeah, that'll uh, really affect positively on, it'll really have a positive impact on your electric blue carrot. Now, the care-wise with the electric blue carrot and the blue carrots are pretty similar. It's just that I'm more focusing on the electric blue carrots because that's what I'd go for more than uh, the standard blue carrots because standard blue carrots, they have, like, pretty cool dots on them, but they're just not as vibrant as uh, this fish, which also leads to appearance still. Um, so, yeah, care. They're also pretty easy and... Um, they can be with most fish. I mean, most bigger sort of fish, like bigger tetras, like white tip tetras, rosy tetras, um, bigger barbs, like tiger barbs. Maybe not tiger barbs, though. They're a bit too aggressive. Even though the electric blue carrots can be aggressive, um, the way you can – well, actually, we'll get that to that in the next uh, point, actually. Um, but, yeah, as far as tank mates go, any bigger fish that won't nip at the electric blue carrots fins because I – I think there's a long fin variant out there too. Correct me if I'm wrong. I learn a lot from these live streams. So, yeah, if you guys know more than me, feel free to give me a heads up and I'll know that for future references. So, yeah, basically you can just research on the care for these fish. But in my experience, I don't really um, worry about too many parameters like the GH and KH. So that means it's pretty hardy. and um, yeah, I agree with you, Craig. They do love sand. Um, I have sand in my tank with the EBA, and, yeah, it's sifting through it a lot, makes holes. It loves it because they're not, they're not a geophagus, which is a earth eater, but they do love sand just to um, excavate holes through. So, yes, I, I'd rather... I think you should have fine sand for the best results with the electric blue carrots so they don't choke on it if they do try to um, put it in their mouths. Um, okay, so the next um, reason is behavior. These guys have so much personality. Um, that's what makes them a great centerpiece fish too because they're very active, they're very socializing, and they're going to interact with you so much. I mean, like you come – you. You come in front of the tank, and they're just going to come right up and just look to see if you've got food or um, to tell you, hey, this is my territory, back off. So with behavior, though, it can lead to some aggression. So to, so to stop that aggression is pretty easy, actually. So if you look at this, um, if I go to the document, if you – okay, yeah, that works. If we go here, you can see this tank that I just got off Google. You can see, if you look all around here, well, first of all, this isn't really much of a community aquarium. This has got mainly just blue caras, but if you did, this is a good example. All these little rocks and areas in the tank. Look, that's an area right there. That's an area in there. Um, there's an area there or an area there. Or let's see, there, if that's deep enough. Um, all those areas, even there, uh, you want to have something like that going on. It doesn't have to be rocks though. It can be any anything. Just you want to try and divide the tank at the bottom and make at least, if you have like one electric blue carrier or two, um, I recommend you try go for at least four different areas of the tank for it to make territories. Whereas if, it ha if you have a pretty open bottom tank, and you have a bunch of other fish in the tank, then they're going to get too aggressive because they're going to think that that whole bottom area is their territory, and there'll be fish that are going in that area of the tank, like catfish. Um, they'll be going down there. And then when the – and if the electric blue carrot thinks it's in their territory, which the whole bottom of the tank is their territory, 
they're going to try and attack that fish and possibly lead it to stress and death. So you don't you don't want that to happen. So to stop that from happening, you literally just put spread out some rocks across the tank, some driftwood plants. Um, when you're keeping live plants with these fish, you want to try aim for ones that are going to be firmly in the substrate because they do like to uproot plants sometimes. You also want to try go for hard leafed ones like ferns or um, something that's not that doesn't really have like uh, fine leaves. Something like rotala isn't great. Something like yeah, ferns, um, swords. What else? Cryptocranies do great. All those are uh, plants that kind of come out of a bulb is also pretty good. You can see this one here is has a little bulb there. That's pretty good. Whereas if you have like little um, parts that are just plant, you have one stem there, one stem there, one stem there, then it'll easily just, oh, my camera just turned off. Let's turn that back on. Oh, no. Oh, damn it. I think my my camera died. Oh, my camera died. Okay. Yeah, okay. My camera is dead, so we're just going to have to um, change it back to my sad old camera. Yeah, that's nowhere near as good, but it's clearly just so over overdone. Um, okay, we're back. In fact, that could be a bit better. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, a bit frustrating, to be honest. Okay, so yeah, to reduce uh, aggressive behavior in a community aquarium, you just have lots of hiding places throughout the tank and you'll be just just fine. So they're still a little bit aggressive, though separating them will actually help a little. Just separate them for a day or so, and that'll teach them the lesson. <laughs> they, they might uh, go back to normal again. But, yeah, sometimes you might just get those electric blue caras that just won't, like, be peaceful and won't make peace with any fish in the tank. It's just going to be aggressive all the time. So I guess those are my three reasons on why you should get the electric blue caras, EBAs for short. And they are a very cool aquarium fish. They can be a bit hard to find depending on where you live. Um, in fact, I've actually seen them at all my local fish stores around where I live, like the dedicated fish stores. But, yeah, they can be rare in some areas, I guess. But if you live in America, it should be a bit easier to find, I, I'd expect, with, um, you know, since they're not too far, they're pretty native to areas of the country. But I'm, I'm probably wrong. Like, there's fish that are native to Australia that, we can't, that are more available in other countries, which is, I find a bit weird. I don't know why, but, yeah. Yeah, that's... um. Yeah, I guess that's the three reasons why you would want an electric blow car. I think I've said that too many times on this live stream today. Um, yes, Marlon, I am Aussie. Get I my Oh, Craig hates catfish. Craig, if you hate catfish, I'm afraid I cannot have you on a stream ever again. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Nah, that's okay. I hate, um, what do I hate? To be honest, I hate those assorted guppies at a fish store. They're just so inbred and so ugly because of how ugly the genetics are. I mean, you can't really see the genetics straight off, but... 
you know, I just don't really like them. I don't mind fancy guppies or like um, your more like hardier guppies or endler guppies. I'm fine with those and any other live bearer. Although I do hate the the goggle-eyed, something weird, some, some weird name like that, the goggle-eyed goldfish. Um, yeah, that's just very, very weird and animal cruelty, actually, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I love, you know, I, you know, I do love old fish, but, I mean, there's just some fish I wouldn't keep, that I wouldn't like to keep or try keeping. Okay, yeah, except those, yeah, the big-eyed goldfish. It's animal cruelty because they can't see where they're going. Even the bubble-eyed goldfish, too. They've got those bubbles under their eyes. What is that about? We got Marco Isidori, Isidori um, today from Italy. Uh, I learned some. I learned seven years of Italian at my old primary school, and we learned almost nothing. Now, let me know if uh, if this is correct. But um, this is my name is Lazarus in Italian. Mi chiamo Lazarus. That is correct. That's expected, but if it's not, geez, what have I been spending an hour a week at my old primary school for? <laughs> um, well, at my primary school. I'm in high school, so really I haven't had two primary schools before. Uh, so, yeah, Marco was has actually, like, been subscribed to the channel for such a long time. I think it's over a year I think he was, um, he was like one of my, like, supporters that had over a thousand subscribers, I think. And yeah, he commented on one of my videos, and yeah, he's supported quite a few, he's commented on quite a few videos before, so yeah, really, really appreciated the support, especially at the beginning, was really helpful at motivating me, but exactly, Craig, they look like airbags, that's a very good preference. Um, Yes, Marlon, I am in high school. Um, so, yeah, 13 years old and year seven. First year and we're on online learning. Yeah, Lazaro is the biblical biblical name. Yeah, that's where, um, I think that's why I have a name day, but I can't, I don't know when that is. Sometime it's, um, yeah, a Greek name. And apparently, um, in the Bible, um, Lazarus was Jesus's best friend. And, um, Lazarus got killed, I think, died, and he came back from the dead. So that's why people you might search up my name on YouTube and you might see some videos in the results that say Lazarus fish. It's like a fish that's come back from the dead. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is my second life or something. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, I, yeah, I know some people here probably aren't. Uh, Religious of any kind don't have a religion, that's okay. So if we won't get into any of that, but yeah. But yeah, I say that a lot, but yeah. So uh, I say but because uh, there could be something else I could say. And I don't know what to say, so I just say yeah. I guess that's a habit. I apologize sincerely. Oh, yeah, in year seven too, Marlon. Nice. Year seven is a good year, I guess. Yeah, it's a good year. In fact, yeah, it's been a great year for me. I don't know what I'm talking about. Benny's Aquatics, Ronan, how are you? Welcome. 
to another stream. Um, I hope you're doing well. Year 12. Ooh. Oh, so you're older than my sister. Crikey. Oh, wait. Year 12, is that like the same in Australia? Is that like uh, the year before you go to university or college? Otherwise, it's confusing. Um, Marlon, it, it could just be the consistency, honestly. Um, also, networking, like supporting others does work well. But, yeah. Um, I've really just been focusing on the uploads lately. That's That's it, really. You're 16. Are you turning 17 this year, Ronan? Okay. Um, HC Aqua. How are you going, Jesse? Um, it's been a while since you've uploaded. Um, yeah, I heard you had to move and you had to, like, get rid of most of your ponds and aquariums. It's a shame, but um, I hope you're getting back into it. Or soon, maybe. Um, but yeah, those those who don't know, there we go again. But yeah, um, but yeah, Je Jesse and I did a live stream on my chat. Oh no, not a live stream. We did a uh, podcast, a pre-recorded podcast. Um, but it was like a year and a half ago. Um, but. A long yeah a long time ago and yeah that was pretty fun and yeah the amount of tanks Jesse used to have at least was incredible but I honestly wouldn't get that many because yeah I would be struggling so much but with the help of your wife Jesse would have been worthwhile <laughs> Nice one, Marlon. 4K is a pretty good and um, hopefully organic number. Good, good job. Yep, you've just set up. Il Jesse just set up eleven tanks. So slowly, get, slowly getting back into it. Can't wait to see any updates and that sort of stuff. But. Um, yeah, it's great to hear. Eleven tanks still past my mine, and that's that's still a lot. Um, yeah, I know, Jesse. I have grown up since then. Looking back, then I had like the squeakiest voice. Oh no, not squeakiest, like the highest voice. Now I have like a deep voice. I'm thinking um, once we reach 4K, I'm thinking maybe um, I'll do like a special where I'll just like um, get a video from each month since I started up to now or like at the time I get the 4K and then yeah we'll just see how much I've grown up since then because I can tell you my, my voice and face has changed quite a bit. It's a bit weird to talk about. It feels weird. We'll go for another 11 minutes um, and then we'll finish up. But yeah, we're starting to get some more people in after the presentation. Kind of funny. Um, Benny, I've been enjoying your videos. Um, I mean, view wise, really. I, I'm not really great at that sort of stuff. I mean, I've made a few videos that have gotten a couple thousand and that sort of thing, but I upload a lot of videos that don't do well, too, so. Marlon only has one tank. John, how's it going? Welcome to the live stream, and how are you tonight? Thanks for coming. Now maybe. Oh, come on. I think.
think my camera's... Oh, yes, my camera's working again. Let's change back to my good camera. I think it just got a bit too hot. It's still a bit warm, but... Okay, let's let's put it back onto the the really good camera. There we go. I quite like that instead. Okay, I see we've got some questions. Really great. So we got a question from Marco. Um, are there any invasive tropical fish in my rivers and lakes? Lots. In fact, I think maybe there's more invasive fish than native fish now. So many native fish have become endangered. So we've got um, mosquito fish, Gambusia holbrooki is their scientific name. The eastern mosquito fish, but up like on the other side of Australia, there are western mosquito fish. I think they look a bit cooler than the eastern, but the eastern have this um, like pretty cool patterning along the body and this really cool streak going vertically on the eyes. So that that's really really cool. But I mean, I, I haven't kept I haven't considered them in aquariums before. But I did do a accidental experiment. I mean, I forgot about them and uh, it was years ago. But I got some mosquito fish and I put them in a tiny plastic container, literally like that big. Put them in one of those. A month, I left them a month while I was on holidays and I looked back into that container and I had, I originally put two in there and then there was one. Now that's actually good though. A fish survived that period with only a piece of moss. That's it. No, not much algae on the container at all. Maybe they ate the algae, I don't know. But that's one invasive fish. We've also got roaches, um, like just in the local creeks and waterways. We also got uh, carp, European carp. They're a really bad invasive fish. Um, but where I'm at at the moment, it's uh, we're near salt water, so I don't know too much about invasive fish in there, but out there. But back at my place, with all my fish tanks in the freshwater waterways that are all polluted, we really just have the. Um, introduce fish that are super hardy and yeah they, they breathe so much so that's we've got it's kind of, it's really bad actually yeah jesse used to have 150 tanks and 11 feels like nothing that's what it'd feel like to me too. I mean, going from that um, adjustment, it's pretty big. So what kind of fish have I bred since we did that podcast? Honestly, I haven't really been breeding much fish, so I haven't really had like the most room. Although, um, I oh, well, actually I have bred a few things, just like things that are easy to breed though, basically live bears and invertebrates. So. I bred the Japanese blue and guppies. I also mixed bred um, a sawtail and a platy. Yeah, those two together. And what did I get? I got fry. Yeah, really just, I think they were sawtail fry. They turned out to be more, they had the more sawtail traits than the platy traits, but they both look so similar, except the sawtail will have the tail when it comes to males. So. It's hard to tell, really. Um, okay. Let's see. 35, Craig has 35 tanks and hard work. I, I couldn't imagine. That would be, yeah, a real struggle for me, I'll be honest. Uh, see you, Fish for Life. Uh, thanks for coming. Really great supporter lately. Um, how many tanks do I have? Okay, this is not going to seem impressive at all. When I do all these informative videos on how to take care of fish, this is all I got. But 
We've got four aquariums. Yeah, just four. We've got an 80 litre, a 90 litre, a 60 litre, and two 20 litres. Well, one of them isn't set up, so I don't count that one yet. Um, and if you want to convert those to gallons, that is an, a 20 gallon, 25 gallon, 5 gallon, and a 15 gallon, and another 5 gallon. That spare 5 gallon would probably just be a great tank for any fry we've got. Although, Jesse, um, how did I get off the question? What about bread since then? So, yeah, I've bred those Japanese blue endless. Um, I've also bred, a, like, I've bred a few um, blue diamond shrimp, blue diamond shrimp, or blue sapphire shrimp. They've got two names. But I've bred them, and um, by accident, I just had a few, and they started breeding. In fact, that was the aim, but still, I didn't need to trigger anything. So, yeah, that that worked out well. We've also, I don't know, I've got some random see-through shrimp in there. Might just be some poor quality um, blue sapphires, or it might be some of my old ghost shrimp I had in one of my 20 liters. But I, I kind of forgot which one was which after a while. Um, of moving them around so much. Okay. Well, yeah, 2.35k subs is, I, I, I know, like, people, also people do really appreciate that. I appreciate it um, a lot, actually. In fact, I don't know what I'm saying when I think about it. 2.35,000, if you picture that many people standing in your house, that's a lot of people, a lot of people. Let me tell you that, a lot of people. I don't know why, that's just, that was weird. Okay, how many tanks do I answer that? 20 tanks, Vernon, and I thought, really? I thought you had a lower number than that. I thought you had like 12 or something. Did you just get new aquariums or something? Crikey. Crikey, my. Jeepers. Um. Oh, yeah, Lockie made a video on catching mosquito fish and putting them in his pond. Yeah, I've done that too. I did a um, mega fish trap one. It's really cool. You just get, like, a bigger bottle and you use that. That did pretty well, but, yeah. I enjoyed that a lot. It's always fun making videos on catching uh, mosquito fish in the local waterways. I know so many people have done it, but to me, I could watch so many of them. They never get boring to me. I know this isn't a good question. Every question is good, okay. It's just some that might not, like, I guess, be great for the channel, but still a good question. But do... Do I make money off YouTube? Do you have to have a certain amount of subs or what? You actually don't need a certain amount of subscribers to make money because, first of all, you can just get a sponsor on the channel. Like, I got Kings of Crows and Ant World. Shout out to them. In fact, do we have a mod in the chat? No, we don't. Okay, I have to do the work myself. Okay. Um, Kings Aquariums and Ant World have been a sponsor to my channel for over a year. They've made the merch for me. And, um, yeah, really the merch isn't meant to have it, make any profit out of it. I just really have friends and for myself, for my videos. That's um, Kings of Crimson Outworld. I mean, the support they've given me. They really do deserve a few few more subs here at 242. And they definitely deserve more views because they're very kind people and they've got a family too because, you know, you, you can't avoid that. You've got a family. Little kids, you know, got to love them. Um, oh, you got a few more tanks this weekend. That's why. Oh, well, so with um, making money on YouTube, I mean, I'm just going to say this, but... Um, to get monetized, like to actually earn money from YouTube, is you need 4,000 hours watch time and 1,000 subscribers. And just to quickly answer your question, yes, I do. But I'm not going to say how much or around it because 
that's personal. But let's uh let's try now ease off the questions because then if I see a question I want to answer it. And I've got to go. Got to go watch a movie. Okay, that's not a good excuse, is that? Um, okay. Black bears are easy to breed, but underrated as to how much fun they are. Yes, I def that definitely, um, I can see that coming from you because I've seen, like, you make so many videos on your live bears. You have so many, you're, you had so many live bears, you know, that was like one of your main things. No, not like the main thing, but you had, I know you love them so much, so. I can see why there's so much variety and yeah, they do have really great personalities, especially when you have like a tank filled with guppies. That is actually one of the coolest aquariums you can get. And it's heavily planted with a pearlweed carpet. I can tell you, man, that is epic. Just trying to find any questions in the chat. Yeah, you, yeah, you need uh, to make sure you have the 4,000 hours in the last 12 months. But if it's uh, over 12 months period, then you might get demonetized until you have that again. But live streams really help getting the watch time. Um, but that's not what I'm doing mine for. In fact, when I was trying to get monetized, I didn't even have the ability to live stream because of some YouTube issues. Uh, I was too young, so I had to just, I literally just had to grow to get 4,000 hours using just videos. That's why it took me such a long time. But I literally only got monetized a few months ago. Okay. Yeah, fingers crossed, Jesse. No, I mean, like, by the time you upload again, you'll probably, I'm sure you'll get your audience back, because, yeah, you've always got great videos, so. You don't need fingers crossed. You'll definitely still be monetized by then. A day of watch time, if you think about it, that's still quite a lot. Um... Mm. Marco, I've seen um YouTubers who have um haven't uploaded for like four years and their channel's still there. Literally four years. I think it's is it called Dara Bros or something? Something like that. Yeah, Tara Dara Bros. I watched some of their videos, but they've got like survival videos and they, they have 1.5 million and they haven't uploaded for three years. Okay, the camera's dead again. Gonna have to change it back again. We're back with the old camera. <laughs> yep, Marlon, gotta love the school holidays coming up. Oh, Jesse, I think you, you, you should be fine. So you got like 4,000. Let me check. Oh, what? HC Qua. No, Aqua. Um, you got, oh, 6,000. Now you should be fine. I mean, but do please upload. We do love your uploads, but yeah, you, you should be fine if you don't upload for another few months or six months even. 
I've been fishing on the boat a lot recently, but it seems somewhat unrelated. Yeah, I started uploading fishing videos on my channel before. Um, like, they didn't do the best. Like, I started just attracting more fishing people to my channel, not as much of the aquarium viewers. So you can always just make a second channel if you want, but if it's too much, yeah, I wouldn't do it. I'll just fish for fun, and you know, it's kind of hard fishing and filming at the same time, even though I've got like the GoPro and all. I make some wildlife videos now and then though, because this is also animal related too. Yes, thank you Marco for coming. In fact, um, oh yeah, look, you said 1,000 videos, 1,000 subs. I mean, I have seen people do that before. It's, I mean, could work. But, I mean, it, it just seems like so much of a waste of time. Whereas you could just make, like, maybe one video every three days like I did and, uh, you can still get big views on those. Just get, just do videos um, that are quality. Like qu quality over quantity is really good. Although I've just been uploading lots lately because I really enjoy it and I do get like decent amount of views on each video. I get more than 50 usually, so I'm fine with that. Marlon, I'm sure Marco would love, love it if you sub to his channel. Anyone would, I guess. Um, I guess that's uh, going to wrap up the stream for today, though. Um, I'm probably going to do... We'll see how we go. We might do a Tuesday or Wednesday live stream next week. But, yeah, that's it for this week. We're just going to do weekly um, live streams. I'm not going to... I haven't even decided on the subject next week, but... Um, I'll decide something for that, and in that stream, we'll le let you guys decide what you want the next topic to be about. But, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and, uh, yeah, it was nice seeing you again, Jesse. Always great. So, um, I guess that'll wrap up today. Had enough time staring at a little screen. Um... So yeah, thanks so much for watching and I hope you all have a great day and to all those that have come, yeah, really appreciated. Have a good one and I'll see you all in the next video or live stream. See ya.